in this video uh, I will be uh, showing you some examples on active filters uh, so just to get started so here's an example of a low pass active filter so you can clearly see right uh, this op amp is in uh, non inverting amplifying mode because the the input is given here input is given at V plus uh, so that's why it is non inverting mode and we know the output from our previous lecture so this is as you can see this is just the RC circuit and output is taken across the capacitors that's why it's a uh, just the RC low pass uh, filter but uh, now <clears throat> using the op amp you can make it as an active filter so let's get started so in this first diagram actually if you want some amplification factor you do this kind of configuration however if you if you don't want uh, any amplification you know if you just want to transfer the signal then you do you need to gain something like that you just directly connect output to the v minus so let me show you some calculations on this so let me uh, draw the same picture so low pass uh, active filter using op amp it's called active filter because op amp needs power supply to operate so here's the <coughs> I'm just gonna uh, draw exactly the same diagram. Uh, so you have R and RC filter, and the input is taken across V plus, and <coughs> this is V minus. This is the feedback register. Let's call R of F or R2, R1, whatever you can. And this is the grounded. Let's call this as R1. Right. And you apply the signal right here. V in right here with respect to ground. So this is the V out. Right. So first let's work on this. This is R and C. This is the low pass filter as you know. Right. So uh, first to get started, you know V plus is the input to the op amp. Right. And V plus as you know is just the v voltage across the capacitor, which is from voltage divider, you you, you know, G C divided by R plus C of C times V input signal, right? And GC is uh, <coughs> negative J over omega C divided by R plus uh, negative J over omega C. And then you can just simplify, try to simplify that. Uh, negative J over omega C. So R omega C minus J over omega C, right? You can do that. And this, do you can do one more thing. You get uh, <coughs> negative J over R omega C minus J, which I can bring it down. Uh, so negative J. I can bring it down right 1 divided by r omega c over negative j negative j over negative j i'm just simplifying that right so this is equal to 1 over this becomes positive j omega c right and this becomes negative one right because j becomes negative negative uh i guess yeah j one plus one right that's what i get right so that's your v plus <coughs> so v plus is one divided by one plus j 
uh, I'm sorry I forgot R J Omega C R okay right so that's the input to the op amp this is the input to the op amp in this configuration and as you know this op amp is in a non inverting uh, amplifying mode so we know from our previous lecture the output in non inverting amplifying mode is 1 plus this resistance which is feedback register divided by that register that's the uh, amplification factor uh, that's uh, right uh, times the input whatever input to the V plus V plus is your input so and which is this <clears throat> so we just call this whole thing as we can just call this as A of V which is the amplifying gain of the uh, op amp and then 1 divided by 1 plus J Omega CR times V in oh yeah I forgot V in V in and uh, V out divided by V in which is the transfer function H is A V 1 over 1 plus J Omega C R okay and this guy is just as we define in uh, passive filters it's just the H right it's the transfer function and which depends on frequency so it's a function of frequency so amplification game the game gain of the voltage gain of the op amp times uh, this guy so 1 over 1 plus we do one more thing uh, J Omega over Omega C okay where Omega C is 1 by CR is cutoff frequency okay is FC is 1 over 2 pi RC cutoff frequency okay. and its magnitude is going to be uh, a V 1 over 1 plus so I'm just going to convert Omega to the regular frequency C square and square root as you can see so this is the <coughs> uh, transfer function of this low pass active filter you can check the limits so as f at low frequency what's going to happen so at low frequency uh, this is zero so your transfer function is your av as f tends to high frequency hff is almost equal to zero okay so it clearly it's a low pass filter it allows only the low signal low frequency signal and it blocks the high frequency so as f is fc right so what's gonna be the these are all magnitudes what would be the magnitude of the transfer function so it's one uh, this becomes one right so it's a v over root square root of two so you can clearly see this is a low pass filter right so we can do a little bit more calculation on that and <clears throat> so so after getting this this expression now we have to put this in for the body plot uh, as you know for the body plot uh, you have to keep this in decibels so if you now in decibel right uh, H F magnitude decibel is you have to do just 20 log of whatever magnitude you got so 20 log you have a v 1 over 1 f over f c whole square square root right and using the log properties 20 log a v plus 20 log 1 over 1 plus f over f c whole square square root of 2 and you can uh, just keep simplifying a v plus 20 log 
1 plus f over fc whole square this is power negative half and 20 log a of b plus 20 uh, this becomes uh, actually negative 10 because negative half times 20 negative 10 log 1 plus f over fc square remember there is a square thing okay so that's the transfer function in decibel scale okay and then you can check the asymptotic behavior from here <clears throat> as f tends to zero right uh, so the hf db the magnitude is just 20 log a b and as f tends to high uh, at higher frequency hf dv is now at higher frequency uh, this this is really big so this just becomes 20 log a v minus 10 log f over f c because one can be just neglected if frequency is really high so this is 20 log a v and this can be written as negative 20 log of uh, f and negative net plus 20 log f c using the log property so 20 log a v plus 20 log f c is 20 log f so that's your at high frequency and you can clearly see this is this is just a uh, y is uh, you know this whole thing is intercept plus mx you can clearly see the slope at higher frequency right at the slope is just negative 20 decibel per decade you can prove that and if you plot in a body plot if you do in a body plot you know hf in decibel right and it's log of f it will be something like that and this slope is slope at higher frequency you know is negative 20 <coughs> decibel and one more thing this won't be at zero decibel now <coughs> this is not zero decibel now the initial gain is not zero decibel because of this amplification factor av okay so the next problem is uh, given this circuit um, uh, find out the transfer function so the question is the transfer from what's the transfer function hf uh, both magnitude you know and uh, the phase angle for this given circuit so as you can see uh, you have instead of just one register you have a capacitor uh, and register in in parallel as a feedback um, impedance and and as you can see right you can clearly see uh, this is in inverting mode right because this input signal is across v minus so this uh, this is actually the uh, the inverting uh, mode amplification configuration and we know the output right away right <clears throat> so we're, i'm just going to call this whole thing as z of f that's the impedance of this combination parallel which is parallel combination right and we know for for this is inverting for inverting op amp uh, you know configuration you know the gain right so output is our gain output over input right is just a negative gf which is the whole this register feedback impedance divided by this resistance so somehow you need to figure out this g of f in complex format so this guy is the hf which is the transfer function this is nothing it's just the transfer function for this circuit so um let's calculate g of f so g of f 
is just the parallel combination uh, between these two components which is you can uh, you can do uh, like uh, uh, because you have only two components g of c uh, r of f divided by g of c plus r f f and then you can um, now put all the values j over omega c is the impedance of capacitor r f divided by uh, negative j over omega c plus r f and <clears throat> now let's try to simplify that let's try to simplify negative j r f over omega c divided by negative j uh, plus r f omega c whole divided by omega c because these will cancel out now so z of f is negative j r f divided by j uh, plus r f omega c right and let's try to simplify so i'm gonna just divide both side by negative j okay r f by negative j over negative j plus r f omega c by. i'm just trying to simplify that somehow right i just brought the j negative j to the denominator like that so this is then going to be this divided by this is one and negative j goes up it becomes positive j so one plus j omega uh, j r r f right okay that's that's a j of and then just put it here just put in in equation number one then you can uh, right away you can get the uh, transfer function so the transfer function of this circuit is negative gf over rs so we have just calculated the gf so negative gf is rf uh, divided by 1 plus j omega c r f but you have r series resistance and uh, that's your transfer function in complex number format r f over r s 1 over 1 plus j omega uh, we are missing something here I'm sorry so omega r f omega c omega capacitance i forgot the capacitance okay omega r feedback feedback capacitance so that's the transfer function and its magnitude of course will be negative this remains constant right and magnitude will 1 over 1 plus omega <coughs> uh, right uh, and I, I can just convert back to uh, omega c square right that's the magnitude so where omega c is 1 over feedback resistor times feedback capacitor is the cutoff frequency okay that's it so if you are simply given some any random circuit now using this idea you should be able to find out the transfer function right and you can check actually whether if whether this is uh, uh, high pass or low pass filter you can quickly check so now I'm using the same uh, transfer function that I have just calculated so negative RF over R series 1 over 1 plus omega over omega C whole square square root uh, I will just now convert because omega is 2 pi F right I can just do F over FC 
for the square square root I can check the asymptotic behavior as f tends to 0 what what will happen so hf oh, this is the magnitude is negative r of over rs because this is at 0 so it transfer all the signals right so it transfer gain is just maximum Right. as f is very high the transfer function magnitude will be very it becomes very high so zero almost zero right and uh, so gain is zero it blocks the high high frequency signal as f is uh, fc as you can see is negative rs over r r f over rs uh, 1 over square root of 2 the transfer at f of fc the transfer one is 70 percent of initial gain right this is the initial gain 1 over square root is 70 percent so that's how you check and you can clearly see this is again a low pass active filter okay okay the next problem is similarly like this so uh, again this is um, the input signal is given to v minus so it's an inverting up and configuration and uh, the resistor and capacitors are uh, you know connected like this so we need to figure out uh, what type of uh, uh, this uh, what type of filter is this high pass low pass band pass what type of so we will see from after we derive the transfer function magnitude so let's call this as z2 and this whole thing let's call this z1 impedance right and since this is again an inverting amp op amp configuration right because input is signal is given here and the p p plus is grounded this is definitely a inverting op amp and v out we know the v out over v in right which is the gain or uh, gain of op amp is negative uh, so this impedance divided by whole this impedance right so g2 divided by g1 so r2 divided by r1 if you remember from previous lecture and this you just need to put those impedances so so negative so g2 is just uh, r2 so I'm just going to first write down in terms of symbol. G1 is this sum, sum of these two impedances. So which is R1 plus uh, negative J over omega C. Right. And then now you just need to simplify this. R1 minus J over omega C. Right. <coughs> and let's see what we can do. Mm, to simplify that and so I'm gonna do this as negative r2 r1 I'm gonna uh, factor up r1 if you factor up r1 it's gonna be j over omega c r1 right and this is going to be see it becomes a very simple relation now 1 over 1 minus uh, j Uh, over omega c r1 this is the transfer function hf f now i will just uh, simplify more from here so hf f is negative r2 over r1 1 over 1 minus so i can write down like this so omega c over omega okay j where i just suppress omega c as 1 over uh, r1c right is the cutoff frequency cutoff frequency okay i just suppress so then this transfer function becomes and i can again convert to regular frequency j f c over f so that's your transfer frequency in terms of complex number. So you have some amplification factor, 
right depending on this resistance ratio times this and the magnitude of this is again is going to be this remains same which is constant 1 over 1 plus fc over f whole is square right right the magnitude of this is this how do you get that so if you remember hf magnitude is you just do the h times its complex conjugate if you do that you will get that so let's check whether it is high pass low pass band pass what type of so as f is zero at low frequency what would be the output what would be the transfer function magnitude is if f is zero right and this becomes very high so it's zero now so it blocks the low frequency signal right as f tends to infinity very high at high frequency it becomes because this becomes now infinity so this factor becomes zero so then that means it becomes negative r2 over r1 it's the maximum gain output will be maximum right and as f tends to fc the transfer function so from here transfer function this 1 over 2 negative r2 over r1 factor times 1 over square root of 2 right it becomes the 70% uh, of the initial gain so this is how you check so this is you can clearly see it blocks the low frequency signal but it allows uh, all the high frequency signal so it's a you can clearly see it's a high pass filter okay so that's how you drive the op amp active filters so the next circuit is something like that it's pretty similar these are all similar so again the this is this op amp is configured in an inverting amplifying mode the circuits are like this the components are connected like this so again um, what would be the output from this right and uh, derive the transfer function for this active filter and from the transfer function figure out you know, whether it is low pass high pass band pass or band reject so again do the same let's call this is z2 let's call this as z1 impedance and then since this is uh, you know this is uh, inverting right inverting op amp mode so we know the av which is v out over v in is negative g2 over g1 right negative g this whole impedance divided by this impedance and you just need to now so here g2 is the parallel combination of these two which is uh, g uh, c2 times r2 divided by uh, r2 plus g c2 which is negative j over omega c2 right divided by r2 plus j over omega c2 and then simplify that so apply after simplify that uh, so after so you can you can try that after simplification you will simply get this one plus j okay so g2 is this okay and g1 is just the sum of these two impedances right so then <clears throat> from the given circuit so g2 let me write down again is simply r2 divided by 1 plus j omega r2 c2 whereas g1 is just the sum sum of these two impedances components right so which is uh, g c1 plus r1 which is uh, <coughs> uh, this is just the uh, negative j over omega c1 plus r1 so then your transfer function which is v out over v in is negative g2 over g1 because the given op amp is in inverting mode so just put these values so r2 over 1 plus j omega r2 c2 all divided by uh, this negative j over omega c1 plus 
or one. Now we we all we need to do is just simplify that, simplify all this. That's all we need to do. <clears throat> so negative r2 over 1 plus j omega r2 c2 this becomes inverted and then I'm just going to write down like this j omega c1 divided by 1 plus j omega r1 c1 after simplifying this and inverting and this becomes now j and then we just distribute all this omega r2 c2 plus j square omega square r1 r2 c1 c2 something like that i'm just multiplying and distributing all this and then you 1 r2 divided by and keep in the denominator you just keep uh, the real part and the imaginary part separately you separate the imaginary and real part so this will be common factor r1c1 plus r2c2 so basically this is the transfer function you can if you want you can further simplify but you can just keep it like that okay and uh, you know the magnitude of this right is the square root of h it's it's complex conjugate and if you do that if you do that so it's going to be omega c1 r2 right it's gone and one real part square plus the imaginary part square whole square and this whole square root in the denominator so that's that's going to be the magnitude okay and now you, you will have to simulate this so making a table you know making for a given frequency was the transfer function magnitude right using this formula uh, and then putting 20 log of h of f separately so you just need this two table right this this two values so go from say 100 hours to uh, you know 100 kilohertz something like that and then if you simulate that data so your body plot will look something like that right so if you simulate so this is the output in uh, the decibels and then here you can clearly see this is a, a bandpass filter so but it's a wide bandpass filter because it's uh, it's bandwidth is wide right somewhere somewhere here so three decibel negative three decibel drop is um, how we define the band gap so the, I'm, I'm sorry bandwidth so this is your bandwidth okay so now you can solve uh, you can um, calculate any type of uh, any you know the transfer function for any type of active filter using the same idea